Hey everybody, we're going to start project one in this video. I'm really excited about it. This one's going to be really cool. Uh, Marta kind of briefly went over the project with you guys in lecture, and I just want to highlight some key things. What we're going to do in this video is we're going to take this cube right here, and we're going to remake it. And what we're going to do is get you these 3D pieces in Rhino that you can then manipulate to build different towers and stuff, um, at different iterations, different versions of buildings and forms and plans using these exact pieces. So we're going to do this exactly. And something I really wanted to highlight is that the exterior surfaces we kept white while the interior surfaces will be painted black. And so we're going to represent that in Rhino as well. So that being said, let's dive right into it. So I took a screenshot from the project assignment and I've uploaded that screenshot to Carmen. So you can find that in the project one folder. I've dropped it in here. And we're just going to look at this and be intuitive because there's no dimensions on here, but the cubes that you guys should have hopefully ordered um, are eight by eight inches by eight as well. So what we want to do is make these shapes using those dimensions. There's a few different ways to do this. I'm going to show you a couple different methods. So we're going to start with a rectangle. And turn on your grid snap. Uh, make sure your project is in inches, although technically I suppose it could be in anything as we're just working scalelessly right now, but we're gonna click our origin and you can either type in eight and eight or you can just count eight out by eight out. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Perfect. All of these things, all these points fall on grid points. So this is a great time to turn on your grid snap. So at the bottom, we have, it looks like four uh, cubes that are evenly divided. And so those would become four by four cubes. If our cube is eight by eight, it's just taking a couple lines like that, right? I'm going to show you some new commands. So we're going to highlight everything and we're going to do extrude curve, type in four, hit enter. It's about four tall. These are my, <laughs> my practice examples. And so what this does is it actually made one big box and two surfaces bisecting it. So what you can do is you can click this box and type in Boolean split. And what that does is you can take 3D objects and split them with other 3D objects, like 2D planes and lines. So I have these two extrusions I'm gonna grab and then click enter. These are our cutting surfaces, hit enter. And that has given us four closed poly surface boxes. So, boom, that's, one, that's a quick way to get the bottom done, right? Top is a little more complicated. So let's take our line work for the bottom, move it over here. We're gonna keep that eight by eight. Let's see what we got. Looks like we have two of these larger triangles that are completely diagonal. So we can just kind of intuitively know that these triangles are gonna be like that. And then it looks like we're going to have a smaller triangle that would appear like this. We want to make sure it snaps to the grid point like that. You can always delete your errant lines. We're going to take polyline 
it looks like from this point, it goes all the way out. So we want an, a cube that is nested in here, a smaller triangle, and this sheared object. So that cube looks like it lines up perfectly with this line, like this. And then it looks like this triangle is right here like this. And these are our shapes in 2D. So another way to extrude shapes is you can highlight everything. Now, obviously, if you extruded this, it would again give you like a solid box with a bunch of um, uh, surfaces that are being extruded. But another way you can do this is to type, highlight everything and type curve Boolean. Select a shape, it'll highlight it like this, hit enter. It'll give you the line work for just that shape. So you can then extrude, type four, enter, and just do it again. Curve Boolean, select your curves, enter, pick that, enter, extrude, four, enter. So you can do that for each of these shapes and that will get you to here. This beautiful replication of this box. Now, like I said at the beginning, we want to split this box into these pieces to make towers, but Marta has specified that the interior faces be black and the exterior faces be white. And so this is something that you're going to literally paint in your physical models uh, with your white foam. You're going to paint the interior faces of these pieces black because you're going to make these pieces exactly like this. But it's also going to be like that in your drawings that are representing this. And we're going to get into that next week. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to make two layers. Uh, one of these layers right now is black. And I can make another one of these layers white. So for example, if I take all these objects and put them on the white layer, it changes the line style. So this is with black and white and rhino, it doesn't really show the surfaces changing color. But what you can do is when you make objects any other color, mm -hmm. <laughs> they show up pretty well. So if we have red and blue, um, let's say our blue layer is interior and our red layer is exterior. The colors in Rhino are arbitrary because your drawings, where you're live painting, which we're gonna learn about that, that is an illustrator function. So right now you're just kind of setting up the drawings. So what we wanna do is we wanna take these and one at a time, we can basically like pull this back, type ZSA over it. Now we know that this face this face and this bottom face are interior, while this face and this face are exterior, but it's one solid object. So what we wanna do is we wanna type explode. This brings it into its surfaces, right? And let's just hold shift and click on our interior faces and then right click on our interior layer, change object layer and then highlight this whole face and type group. So these are individual surfaces that are now grouped together. If you joined them together, they would become one object again, but they could only be one color. So just for our separation that we are, we are wanting to show between interior and exterior space, we're gonna do it like this. And so just with each of these objects, I'm gonna move our workspace over a little bit. 
with each of these objects, we're just going to take these one at a time, explode, grab these faces. Remember, if your angles feel funny, you can type ZSA and it will reorient your camera. Group. Stick this out here. Just keep an eye on what faces are interior and exterior. So right here, we're going to explode. ZSA to zoom. This face, this face, this face, and this face are all interior faces. Change object layer. Group. Really, it's not going to take you that long to set this up. I mistyped that. I exploded. Just this face and this face down here are interior. Room. This one, if we just explode this, grab it's all the faces except for this top face. Change to interior. So it's a little repetitive, but what you could also do is you know that over here, like there's two of these triangles. This triangle, I guess I did twice, but there's two of this triangle as well. So we can just delete that, copy, paste. I did control C, control V for that. We can take it and rotate it 90. Should have done negative 90, but we'll do 180 just to keep it oriented correctly. This box again, but actually, you know, this, these faces are different because this face is going to be on the exterior. So I am going to have to explode this. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. It's grouped, ungroup. Take this, switch it to the exterior and then regroup. I'm gonna take this one, explode. Only the top face stays red. Move this top face. Layer, group. Now these four squares, these cubes are the same. So I can take this, explode and this face and these two interior faces will be interior change object layer oh i'm sorry it did not uh select the right things change object layer okay so our red's the outside blue's the inside don't want to have that line there go ahead and group this and you can delete these extra surfaces, these lines too can go away. We can copy paste this a couple times, rotate this 90, kind of just snap this back here, copy paste again, rotate 180, snap this back to here. And there you have it. You can just kind of bring your pieces back in. All of the interiors should be blue and all of the exteriors should be red. And so this is your original cube and it looks really great. You can kind of see that blue line work bleed out a little bit, but that's totally fine. That's just an artifact of Rhino modeling. And now you can start to use these pieces to construct different forms. And this is one of those things that I can't really tell you how to do. You're going to have to just start to experiment. Maybe you want uh, the interiors to purposefully lead on the outside. And maybe you want certain faces to line up in different ways. And there's really just 
a million ways to do it. You can start to rotate your pieces in different formations. Let's say you wanna rotate this like 45 degrees, stand it up like that. You know, starting to make different towers and shapes. As long as you're using these pieces exactly, it does not matter what shape you make. So play around with it, have so much fun with it. And I can't wait to see the forms you guys come up with. I'll check in with you guys Thursday. Let me know if there are any questions. Ask the GAs. They're so smart. And as always, keep up the great work. See you guys.